Hey everyone, it's David Trecivi here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the vector scope. Uh, this is an advanced look. I'm not going to really go over the details of how to read it and stuff because there's all sorts of tutorials and websites and articles that go over that. Um, what we're going to be looking at is the practical application of this. So it's one thing to learn what all these things mean and how to read it. It's another thing to see yourself actually using it in a practical situation. So I want to take a look at an advanced grid that I did recently and uh, take a look at how the vector scope in particular was invaluable in making sure we hit what the client wanted. Okay, what we have here today is a web commercial for a Chinese milk box. This milk drink is called Yili. Uh, this commercial was produced by Pomp and Cloud, directed by Ryan Stack. This video was intended for Chinese YouTube called Yuku. Um, I don't think it saw any Western distribution, which is a shame because the video is lots of fun. It's got great color. They did a great job. Uh, talent was amazing and uh, the videos tons of fun was tons of fun to work on But it presented a number of interesting challenges for it um, When we first approached this color We were presented with this white infinite space and these four primary colors that kept showing up over and over again and uh, The client had specified four very specific colors that they wanted to use so let's take a look at those these right here are the four Pantone colors that they defined everything as. So all their backdrops, all their paint and stuff, we're supposed to hit these four colors. Unfortunately, because of paint and uh, capture and settings on the cameras, when it came into color, it wasn't looking like this. So we had to do a lot of stuff to individually select these colors throughout the piece and tweak them so they were exactly what they wanted to be which is easier said than done at some points. But fortunately, with the help of the vector scope, we were able to achieve this without too much trouble. So let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, so first thing I did was load in these four Pantone colors into Resolve. I think this is just TIFF or PNG that I brought in as a still frame and captured it into my gallery so that I can keep pulling it up as a reference across images. I've also zoomed in on it, and so I have individual color representations of each of the squares. I could have done a better job on this, but this is just enough to get an idea on each frame with what I'm working with. So let's take a look right here. You can see down in the vector scope, and just real quick to talk about what this is. A vector scope measures the chrominance of your image, and it does it in two ways. So from zero to 100 is the saturation here. So the farther out these things go is how saturated that stuff. And if you hit this line, you go past it, you're past broadcast safe. So you're too saturated, you're chroma clipping and uh, you're not gonna pass QC on broadcast, which wasn't an issue on this spot, but it's still something you wanna worry about. Uh, the other thing this measures is hue. So you can see right here, red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow. This is taking your chrominance and showing where you are on this. And you'll notice also that this circle here matches very similar to your circles here. And that's because this is a way of measuring color that works really well. And the fact that we have this and this at the same way makes it very easy to make adjustments from this once you understand what you're reading. So what this is doing right now is we have these four colors here, and these are where the four values show up on the vector scope. Knowing exactly where these colors fall on the vector scope is gonna make it very easy to match them once we have them isolated from the background image, and it'll make it very quick for us to achieve the perfect color tones for the client. Okay, let's take a look at the shot. So right here we have the final shot of the video. This is the hero shot of the product. There's text that pops up here. This is the most important section of the video to make sure that we are hitting this perfect product green. Um, so first things first, this is how, let's pull this up. This is how the shot came in. You can see the green's a little bit off. We have, haven't cleaned up all the white. We have a cast across the whole image. I'm not gonna go into how we fix this and clean this up. Um, these are just minor tweaks, but the big stuff here is about how to read the vector scope and use that to nail our colors. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the image we've looked very quickly. I'll show you. Here's my primary corrections, which fix the vast majority of our problems here. This here has our four Pantone colors selected because I'm only worrying about the green on this shot. That's all I have enabled. But one of these is blue, one of these is red, and one of these is yellow. Over here, I have uh, some additional cleanups on the whites. This is skin tone fixes. Um, this is cleaning up some stuff that you can't see here, and this is our area log C to Rec 709 LUT that we started off with as our base. I use it as the last LUT because I like grading log footage better. So right here, using HSL qualifiers, I've selected just our hue. You can see here, if I press Shift H, uh, which shows us the preview of just what we selected. You can see there's some on this, but that's okay. We want to change that too. So this is our selection, and very quickly, um, let me go ahead and disable what I've done. So you can see this is where we came in as. Let me go ahead and open up my green Pantone reference here. So I'll go ahead and slide this to the side so we can have both in at once. Now looking over at the vector scope, we can see this is where we need to be. 
and this is where we are right now. So you can see if I enable this green back on, we're dead on at the moment, but I'll go ahead and pretend we're off and show you. Now normally I use my panel when I'm coloring, but in the effort of trying to show you how this works, I'm going to switch to the mouse and show you on the offset wheel. Now let me go ahead and grab the offset. As I grab this and shift the green hues up towards red, you can see how the vector scope reacts the same way. As it moves towards magenta, it moves that way. Down towards cyan, it goes that way. And you can see very quickly that there's almost a one-to-one -one copying of where this is going in terms of this. So I can make sure very quickly that just like that, we're nailed on there. And now just to also show you um, saturation wise, I can grab saturation here. And you can see we move right along this axis and we can keep going. And you'll see here, it starts doing strange things as, as it runs into the LUT. Um, but for all purposes, we, are, we can ignore that. And uh, there we go, you know, very quickly we can say, look at it right there and say, yep, I know that this is nailed. This is the correct color for the client. And I don't have to worry about getting client notes back saying this color's off. This beats significantly, you know, doing this here and like trying to eyeball this and saying, well, you know, maybe if I made it a little bit brighter, it'd fit a little bit better, you know. And you can do this. Um, you can see we're still very close here and we're maybe minimizing our, our spread. But, you know, when you turn this off, and so if we go back and embrace the values that this milk box is supposed to be, we get a more natural image that is still within the Pantone values that we're looking for, if maybe just a tiny bit darker, which makes sense with the shadows of the scene. Because if you do everything that's, that's dead on nail to this, things start looking fake and painted on in plastic. So let's take a look at another shot and just sort of see how we can tweak one. So this green here, I believe, is a little bit more blue. And so we need to go ahead and fix this off. You can see we have it selected here. This is disabled. This is on. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the shot. You know, it's there's this ball and it rolls. But so we need to fix this. And there's a lot of cleanup here that we had to do when we we're in the qualifiers. We're not going to worry about that. So let me go ahead and turn on this green and select this. You can see, OK, you know, we need to bring this over between yellow and green. Um, a little bit more saturation in it. So let me go ahead and grab my offset. And you can do this also with gain, gamma, or lift, or whatever. You can do a combination of them. There's a million ways you can move this to get this here. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab this offset. And we'll drag this over here. And there we go. Now we're pretty much dead on. Uh, you can see there's some string here. And that's from this mist that's going wrong around the milk. It gets a little bit yellow in terms of cleanup that we had to do. We're not going to worry about that. This is close enough for the purposes we're doing. So eyeballing it, it looks maybe a little bit saturated. Um, and it's important, you know, to balance the Pantone colors here and also what looks natural on the screen. So let me go ahead and turn the saturation down a little bit, which keeps us on the same hue line if you open this up. But, you know, maybe feels more natural. Um, you know, and maybe we want to bring up the white some. And uh, there we go, that's feeling pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a different color tone. So here, you can see where I have these selections. Here's the yellow, here's the red, here's blue. So let's go ahead and check this yellow-orange color. You can see, once again, we're pretty close already here. Um, when we first came in, the yellow was very much too green and too white. So let's go ahead and turn on our corrections already that we have. And you can see we're very close. And we'll just nudge it a little bit towards red. And... Looks pretty good right there. We can go ahead and pan over. That's a pretty good match. And you can see this is stretched out a little bit from the tight dot that the Pantone color itself generates. That's because we have a gradient on this image, you know. This is darker down here. This is lighter here. This is maybe a little bit orange, which gives a little bit of spread between it. And that's okay, you know. You don't need to have perfectly flat walls. But you can quickly see, you know, this is closer than where we were a minute ago if I jump back. And it's definitely closer than where we were in the beginning. And that's really it. You know, the vector scope's a very simple tool. It's uh, incredibly easy to use. And a uh, quick tip, real quick, if you're not familiar with this line right here, uh, you can enable it in here, skin tone indicator. You turn it on. And this is where you can also adjust, you know, your vector scope, how intense these lines are, how intense the graticule is. Uh, this stuff's called the trace, if you, if you want to know. And uh, you can also increase two times zoom if you want to have a little bit more detail. I had that disabled because I was working with a highly saturated piece earlier. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And so this is your skin tone indicator. You know, it doesn't matter if you're black or if you're white, if you're Asian, your skin tone is going to fall somewhere on this line. And it's just a matter of how saturated and how dark your skin tone is. And this is a really great way to know that, okay, I'm, the skin tone's dead on. So if I turn this off, here you can see I'm just increasing the saturation, but I think in some of these, the skin tone was a little bit off. Yeah, you can see here. So it's a little bit shifted towards yellow, and as I turn this on, 
we bring you know back a little bit brighter where it's supposed to be and i can match across the board and make sure we're at the same you know brightness value and saturation value but also that we are along that skin tone line and know that we're dead on nailing it and that's it i mean this is a very simple tool it's extremely powerful, especially if you're dealing with very specific colors. If you're working with brand stuff where they have specific brand packaging or colors that are associated with their brand, you can immediately know that what you're doing is dead on. It also is a very quick way to balance particular tones or colors across a series of shots that may not match initially that you need to bring in because they were shot on different days from different environments. This is a great, great thing to know. And when people say, you know, trust your scopes, learn to read the scopes, you know, this is why. Because if you didn't know this, then you're going to be sitting there trying to match, you know, these colors and stuff, and that takes forever and it's not accurate. So vector scope, it's a very simple tool. It's very powerful. And uh, this is how to use it in an actual situation. This is David Torcivia. I really hope you're enjoying these and that they're helpful. I've got some more stuff coming soon. So go ahead and subscribe and I'll try to get those videos out to y'all soon. Thanks for watching.